All right, so we're applying the same strategy for this problem. So uh, to start with, we take f of x to be r tan x, okay? And c equals zero, n equals three, and we're interested in finding p3 of x, and hopefully p3 of uh, 0.4 is going to be uh, what this term is, okay? Um, so f of x is arc tangent x, and, and, and by using the derivatives formula card, check the derivative of arc tan, that should be 1 over 1 plus x squared, okay? And I'm going to write this in the power form so that I can use the generalized power rule, okay? So it's minus 2x, 1 plus x squared to the power of negative 2. All right, right now let's use the product rule. Minus 2, 1 plus x squared, negative 2. And then I have uh, minus 2 down, you have another minus 2x, plus 4x. And then I have the derivative of inner part, which is 2x, and then I subtract 1 from the polish. Okay? So, pulling out 1 plus x squared to the negative 3. So you have minus 2 times 1 plus x squared plus 8x squared. That makes it um, 8, 6x squared, 6x squared minus 2 divided by 1 plus x squared to the power of negative 3. Right now it's a good exercise for you to take the derivative uh, of this function. So let me just get rid of this minus sign here. That's a typo. Okay. I went back to the reciprocal form. Yeah, take the derivative of this term to get the fourth derivative of x, which is exactly equal to 2. That's a good exercise. You can pause the video at this moment uh, to convince yourself that the fourth derivative is written in this form. So in the next step, all I need is, uh, is the derivatives evaluated at 0. Okay, so all of the, the function itself. So I'm going to look at uh, f prime or f0, f of 0, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, and f triple prime of zero. If you have your calculator ready, so you can check those uh, values. So this is arctan uh, zero. So start with arc tan zero, and f prime of zero is uh, just, just one. Yeah, just one. f double prime of uh, zero looks to be zero. And then the triple prime of uh, zero. By the way, we're trying to get to uh, this sum here. Okay, uh, hopefully we will get that. Um, and f triple prime of uh, zero is just negative two. All right. In the next step, I placed all the derivatives evaluated at zero in the Taylor's expansion. Uh, so it's f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime 0 times x squared over 2 factorial and so on. Uh, and some terms are negative. In fact, 0, let me just put that. This, the, this term here is 0 uh, times x squared over 2 factorial. That's a 0 because of uh, f double prime term here. So in fact, p3 of x is just uh, x minus uh, 2 x cubed over 3 factorial. But if you simplify that, x cubed over 3. Okay. So that's why when you plug in 0.4, it's just 0.4 minus 0.4 cubed uh, divided by 3, which is exactly what's given in the statement of the question. Okay, So this is P3, uh, P3 of, uh, P3 of 0.4. So I want to now write uh, R3 of X, okay? because we are going to find an upper bound for R3 of X. All right, just copying uh, the description of the fourth uh, derivative here and plugging it back into this description here, okay? And just clean this part a little bit for us. There we go. Um, so I'm, I'm writing this for n equals uh, three. So the fourth derivative, derivative evaluated at z, the bottom is four factorial, c is zero, x to the fourth. So this is exactly what we get here, okay? And then here z is in between, z is in between um, 0 
And we're going to calculate this. Let's see, we're going to calculate this um, at 0.4. So here we go. 0 and 0.4. So now we can pause the video and think about like what makes this expression, the absolute value of this expression uh, to be, be maximum uh, for z's in between 0 and 0 0.4. Okay? Uh, and when you take the absolute value of this, let me just take the absolute value right away here. Okay, Right away. When you take the absolute value, you don't have this minus term anymore, minus 24, but it's plus 24. Okay. And this term is, uh, is, 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 is looking like it's negative, so uh, you have to take the absolute value of that. But all other terms are, are good. Uh, okay, so uh, essentially, uh, so here I rewrote uh, the description of uh, uh, the fourth derivative evaluated as z, just for you guys to see better what makes this part maximum. I just rewrote that. I took the absolute value. Apparently, z equals uh, 0.15 uh, is the one making this expression uh, bigger. Even though you adding 0.15 to the uh, bottom, that makes it bigger. Uh, but but top is getting bigger that way because if z equals zero, if you go with z equals zero, the, the top is zero, this whole thing is zero, so so that means there's no error in that regard. So I think you should go with z equals uh, 0.15 um, and, and go back here and go with the 0.15. Um, so now we're going to look at um, r3 of uh, 0.4 absolute value. This is less than or equal to 24. 0.15 minus 24.15 cubed divided by 1 plus 0.15 uh, squared. Okay, to the power of 4. And I also have x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial, but x is 0.4. Okay, so go ahead and uh, calculate this number, and this would be the upper bound of the error by keeping uh, four terms in the sum, and, and, and that means I'm keeping, uh, I'm choosing uh, the Taylor polynomial of order three to estimate uh, arg tan uh, 0.4, okay? And this is the approximated value of this. All right, this was a long question and uh, a lot of complicated expressions, but I hope you get the point. Uh, of using the Taylor theorem to find the upper bound for the error uh, in the approximation. So I'll see you in another video. Uh, 